Hello, Josh here from Racing to Profit. I hope you can hear me um, talking or recording this video on Tuesday afternoon. Um, and the aim is to have a look at York's Dante meeting, which starts uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. Uh, always a decent uh, three days for the flat enthusiasts, and there's some cracking racing coming up, in few, uh, including a few um, competitive handicaps, if you like those sort of things. I have pulled together, what am I going to start with, uh, some stats and trends pointers, if you like. Uh, using this kind of approach, certainly as a starting point and as a way in, I have, um, yeah, there's a few, as you can see, if you head to the blog on the home page or the blog page, uh, all the free reports and systems, I think it will file in there also. Uh, you can flick through this blog post and use as you please. There's a few trainer jockey combos for Gosden and Frankie Dettori. Uh, stats for the last eight meetings, as you can see, you can flick through those. Varian and Andrea at Zaney. Uh, a few for trainers, very micro. Clive Cox doesn't run many over the sprint trip, but they tend to be worth keeping an eye on when he does. Um, appears to send a good one, and they appear to be ready uh, when running over that distance here, uh, Andrew Balding in Class 1 races and William Haggis. Again, uh, limited numbers, but they tend to target them. Certainly William Haggis in recent years with his Class 1 runners. Um, Declan Carroll, Class 3 races. They seem to be something he targets, although I'll, I'll flick through tomorrow's card. and uh, His yard probably could be in better form, but that's something I might touch on. Uh, Richard Fahey, uh, those having their first ever career run, uh, this appears to be a meeting where he likes to send uh, a kind of sharp uh, two-year-old where they appear to be ready and have some ability, so they're worth keeping an eye on also. Um, there's kind of three further micros this is looking at those horses that ran at the Guineas meeting at Newmarket last time out. Generally competitive racing, as you'd expect. Class 1, fairly likely race 1 to 11 career runs. You can see the stats there. Uh, Micro 2, those that ran at Chester's May meeting and finished in the places. Um, and the Sire Invincible Spirit uh, from 29 races um, has done pretty well in recent meetings. All different horses uh, winning there. So... Um, his offspring are, are kind of worth a second glance, certainly as a way in. Um, there's something about uh, this track and this meeting um, that they seem to like, and I think there's logic for kind of obviously tra uh, size doing certain uh, doing well at certain uh, meetings, and depending on the time of year they are possibly linked to that also, but um, that's something to explore. Uh, on day one, as I talk, there's a couple of class two handicaps, and I will provide the stats and trends pointers for all of those this week. There's a couple on Thursday, which I'll get sorted on Wednesday, and there's a further one on the Friday, uh, and there's some okay pointers, some kind of logical, decent enough kind of 12 from 12 stats for both of these. Um, and, you know, I've applied the trends, there's the kind of shortlists, uh, trainers who have won the race previously in the last 12 years, and if they've got any representatives this year, and then on to the 210, um, which is a class 6, class 2, uh, 6 furlong handicap, um, I should say, and uh, yeah, so there's that to look at, uh, so yeah, on the home page, or the blog page, um, you can find those posts, uh, and tomorrow's free members, uh, daily post uh, the first kind of update one is up and you can flick over to that uh, there's usual daily stats content and yeah york one i've listed the qualifiers against those uh, angles that i've just shown you micro three micro two uh william haggis uh, andrew balding so there's a few different runners there uh, and i've added some kind of horse race base which are these h kind of h1 2 and 3 which is top 3 rated um and gg speed and i'll flick over to gg's gold in a moment uh if they're top rated g1 g2 second rated g3 third rated in the race that's just some ratings information um kind of added extra info you can use if you like uh, to use this content as a way in uh and to kind of use as you please um they are only, of course, ever a guide. But yeah, you can see I've applied the stats and trends. Uh, there's shortlists here. Uh, the last shortlist, and I will go on to these races and try and possibly be more useful than I arguably was 
in the Victoria Cup. Um, but in any case, that short, short list of four uh, in the Victoria Cup from Ascot at the weekend included the winner at 12 to 1. So hopefully, uh, these short lists here from these two handicaps may well include the winner also. Um, but hopefully, a starting point and a useful starting point and way in uh, for you to look at. I'm going to jump over to uh, Gigi's Gold. Um, and I'm going to look at the race cards. The ground, it hasn't rained at um, York since Saturday, I don't think. There's some showers uh, meant to be around all week. So it could be, I'll set it a good to soft. It says good, good to soft in places. I think that's going to be about right. Um, if I just flick through, you can note down, of course, uh, anything you want. As always, uh, the kind of green symbols are positives. Um, more so than looking at the red symbols as negatives. But... Um, you know, the likes of Roger Charlton just starting to get going in the last 14 days. Uh, William Haggis is in decent form, as you can see there. Again, you can see his record last 14, 30 days. Um, his track record in the last five years, in the last year here with all runners uh, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, he does pretty well. He does well with horses after a break as well. Uh, so there's different things you can flick through there. Roger Varian, I think I flagged this Um um, a recent video also the fact that he's in decent form as you can see Rafe Beckett's going along okay side being Soror they're starting to tick along there's some decent stats this season certainly in the last 14 days um, so that might be a yard worth keeping on also uh, David Manusia, um he's also starting to fire and inform and I will flick on to this race in a minute um, because and just focus as it's one of the two kind of trends handicaps but I thought I would just quickly flick through the race cards so you could block uh, note down any kind of trainer jockey positives if you so wanted um, you know Paul Hannigan's in form Danny Tudhope's riding well um, in the last kind of couple of weeks and I've said before you know jockeys in form never a bad thing Sylvester D'Souza uh, in the last year has done pretty well at York as you can see there um, you know, his five winnings in the last year and the previous five, including obviously the last year before that, 10 in total. So uh, maybe he's got to grips with the place. Um, Connor Beasley, he does fairly well here. 11 from 53, 18 places, all rides in five years, given the competitive nature um, of the racing here. And some of the horse he'd be on, that's decent stats, I should think. A chunk of those are probably Dakota Gold, is it? Or the horse he had a very good relationship for Dodds, who is a winning machine. Um, so there's different things there. Uh, what else can I flick through? I'll go back to those two races. A bit more depth in a minute. Uh, as we get on to the uh, 240, yeah, Varian Haggis and Bin Soror are kind of the three uh, in red hot form, arguably trainers in this race. That's not to say some of the others aren't. I'm speaking, um, uh, recording this video just after Kevin Ryan's had one bolt up at uh, Beverly, so his aren't going too bad either. Um, what else? Uh, 310, anything in here? Um, George Bowie, uh, his. He's started his training career um, pretty well. Decent stats in the last year, ticking along at near a 22% win strike rate, 60% of rivals beat, and from two, three, four runners isn't too bad. You can see his stats in the last 14, 30 days. His is a yard worth keeping an eye on, not necessarily for this race, but race, but moving forwards. Uh, a trainer uh, to note. Um, Aidan O'Brien's are going okay, uh, as you'd expect, although performing below market expectations, not necessarily his fault. A lot of his horses may arguably be over bet. Um, Ryan Moore, for some reason, isn't everyone's cup of tea, but he is still one of uh, the best jockeys in this country, and one of the best jockeys in the world, and he's absolutely flying along in the last month, um, and the last 14 days in particular, really riding with confidence, and uh, possibly the best he has done for quite some time. Um, like I said, yeah, I've touched on the variant there. Uh, while, what else do I want to do? Let me just uh, flick through these three races. Again, you can just note down any, um, you know, trainers in form. Clive Cox is going along well, uh, as you can see there. Uh, Mark Johnson's bashed in 80 winners since January the 1st, I think. I mean, they're just continually flying along. Uh, you obviously have to pick and choose them. You can't just back them all. Well, certainly not to starting price. You would lose a lot of money. Um, not that anyone should be backing to uh, industry starting price anyway. Uh, but, um, you know, his are going okay. John Sadie Gosden... 
uh, well, they're not going along that great, are they, in the last 14 days? They obviously have a lot of runners. This time of year is always tricky. You get lots of horses coming, you know, first time out. Some are rusty, some need the run. Doesn't necessarily mean the yard is out of form, of course. So that's always something to keep an eye on. Um, what else have we got here? Five furlong, uh, Haggis and Johnson again in terms of the two looking good form. Uh, I'm just trying to see. Um, yeah, Brian Smart there, you know, in the last year, his horse is having their first ever career run, three from 19. Uh, some seem to go in at nice prices, so that might be worth uh, keep, uh, well, worth a look. This horse might be worth a closer look. I wouldn't say two-year-old racing is, um, and first time out, two-year-olds is a speciality of mine, but Johnston at the track in the last five years, three from 13, seven places uh, with his first time out, two-year-old. So given his form uh, and the main man for Shadwell's on, uh, that horse there may be worth a closer look also. Um, you can see the Ryan stats, so on and so forth. And finally, uh, the 450. Um, anyone to know here, we've got Varian, Balding, you can see there, Minusia again. Uh, Scott Dixon's going okay as well. Um, you know, a few trainers in uh, jockeys informed Jamie Spencer, Ross Ryan, Danny Tudder, Ryan Moore. Um, that's possibly an interesting booking on the Defoy horse. Just thinking aloud, haven't really looked at this race. Um, but yeah, there's a few things there in terms of trainers, jockeys. You may want to take a closer look at. What I'm going to do is take a kind of spend the last ten minutes just flicking through this 140 from York uh, and the 210. Um, we can see the different uh, things there. I'll click on the instant expert. Um, hopefully it doesn't go soft. If I change this ground to good to soft through to soft, you can see the winning form there in ground conditions in the class. These, of course, proven in conditions and something may improve for riding uh, or for getting the chance to operate in these conditions. Uh, but you can see those there, the handicap marks down the right hand side. Uh, Raymond Tuss, seven pound below his last winning mark. A few of these are above. You know, thrown halls 10 pounds above his last winning mark. A fair few of these are still open to improvement, though, uh, and clearly something may step forward if we just look on handicaps and flat handicaps in particular. Um, so I can change all these and get a feel for where the green is, where the amber is, which is the positive, who has course form. There's different things there you may wish to note down. That's the winning form. I can click on place, uh, which is maybe interesting enough also. Um, and different things you can look there uh, in terms of class and going and everything else. There's pace, which is interesting. This pace map is fascinating. Uh, if I sort it by draw, uh, it's obviously over 14 furlongs, so the one's going to be near the rail. But you can see here, uh, especially on good through to good to soft, that being held up in mid division isn't actually a negative. Uh, and maybe some horses go too hard out the gates over this course and distance and then fold. I don't know. Certainly big fields. You can see here it's actually been more of a positive to be kind of in this area here rather than up front here, although there's not loads of pace, um, uh, you know, it, all of these kind of things depend on the jockey, but um, certainly uh, it may not be a negative being more patiently ridden in this sort of race. And you can look at that pace map. Uh, if I just click on the draw, obviously one on the inside rail on the left-handed track all the way through to 16 outside here. Uh, but again, um, being drawn high isn't, well, in these conditions, isn't a negative. Um, as you can see there, uh, you know, plenty of winners are drawn high. Um, so don't necessarily be put off by that either. Obviously, it's all a question of jockey ship and if they can get out, get across, um, maybe not too far back. But like I said, and we've just seen not necessarily a negative. Um, some of these near the inside rail, the Bin Soror horse, Kevin Ryan's may be able to get out um, and across. Um, and yeah, the Haggis horse here, uh, we've got William Buick out wide. His can go forward, so it'll be interesting to see what he does given uh, his wide draw. Um, so we've got that there, and you can do with that what you please. If I just jump back to uh, my trend shortlist, you can obviously flick through. Um, hopefully, uh, they will do as well as they did in the Victoria Cup in terms of highlighting 12 to 1 winner. There was a 28 to 1 place. Um, so there's this long list here. Um, they're worth a flick through. There's also this kind of uh, shorter list here applying uh, one of the kind of 11 from 12 stats as well. Um, the couple I'm just going to focus on, I've had a quick flick through um, kind of this list and I'd encourage you to do the same. It's quite a fun challenge. Uh, see if there's any of those horses in particular that you like. Um, I uh, 
may have a kind of some interest TV change on uh, the Minusia horse uh, Luigi Vampa, uh, four years old, uh, the right end of the handicap, only the tenth run of his life. Um, uh, he was he ran okay. He was a bit of a nut draw. I think he was gelded uh, at some point last season. Maybe it was before last season or before this run here at Goodwood. Uh, he had a tendency to kind of duck out of the stalls and hang one way or the other. That was an okay run in a class two at Goodwood, a three-year-old handicap. Um, a racing post rating of 91 there, which was above his mark. And that's something I, I like to look for. Uh, indicates they could be well handicapped, certainly when you combine it with possibly with some hot form. This run here at York I like. And, you know, course form, not having course form at York isn't necessarily a negative. More so, again, if you've got experience of the track, I, I would mark it up as a positive, uh, especially big field handicaps. Uh, experience of that, even especially if you're still open to improvement, for me is always a positive. If you go and watch that race back, and I have done, he got bummed and he fell out of the stalls there. He was drawn in six and he was kind of near the back after a furlong. Um, he's then kind of swept round, round wide uh, from an unpromising position and stayed on all the way to the line up this near side rail. Um, that was a really good run. Um, he stepped up a kind of furlong this season, returned after two, three, two days, uh, led for a bit, then stuck in second, put his head down. He looked a lot more straightforward. It was in a first time tongue tie, um, a racing post rating there of 95 from what was a mark of 86 at the time. Um, uh, some of these races have worked out well. I always like to look at races that have produced sub subsequent winners, if you kind of that then what in excellent GG's uh, race cards here. Um, and obviously you can dive into those races deeper and see what those horses have achieved, uh, whether or not that gives a mark on the horse being well handicapped. So he's only gone up three pounds. He's fit. He's in form. Um, he could well be a nice each way price. Uh, he's still open to improvement, obviously, the 10th run of his life. Second run in the tongue tie. He looked more straightforward at Windsor than he has done before. Um, obviously, I'm not sure, you know, he wouldn't necessarily want a downpour. Uh, that sand down run was okay. He did make some headway. Um, whether or not he does actually want it quick and doesn't want too much cut, but that's the kind of thing you kind of look at the price. And whether that's built into it, I wouldn't necessarily want a short price because there is a ground niggle, but it's more of an unknown. I can't say for sure whether or not he will hate good to soft, um, but he might be one that's worth a closer look and worth an interesting look. Like I said, the yarder in form, he generally does well um, with, uh, well, all of his handicappers and ev everything. He doesn't send too many to the course, but they send, tend to do quite well also. Um, and he does kind of well with his staying horses as well. Um, so he could be of interest here, especially there's a few horses here who might come on for the run. There's a plenty up here who, who are high up in the handicap and will need to be kind of uh, bordering on listed group three class to take this from this sort of mark which they may well be um given some of the yards uh obviously he's up two classes but he has got experience for class two when he was younger so he might be of interest and that and i thought the simon chris would i mean i'm always looking uh well i say always looking i'm actually may or may not know a lot of my um analytical focus now on tipping races in particular is in kind of uh jumps races and particularly chases over kind of three miles, two miles, seven and further. Um, but I like looking at these and trying to provide and say something of use uh, to people that like playing on the flat in more depth. And I like, you know, these big kind of ITV festivals and big racing, um, you know, having some sofa change flying around on some uh, decent price horse in handicaps can be a bit of fun. Um, so, and there's some people who take these a lot more seriously and actually would view these sorts of races as one of the last opportunities uh, to really get some value and do well on the flat. But you do have to put in, in my view, a fair amount of time in these races. And this kind of flick through is only meant to be that. Um, hopefully saying something of interest uh, as a kind of way in and something you can ponder and look a bit deeper if you want. Um, La B for Simon Chrisford. Uh, I, William Buick's a classy jockey and I think any booking, wherever he's booked on, um, especially when not on an Appleby horse, uh, it can be worth a second glance. This is only the seventh, uh, the seventh run of this horse's life. Um, he seems to have gone well on good to soft. This 
Ascot run was decent. He was behind onto victory for Alan Kings, who won a few since and won a decent flat handicap at Doncaster after this race uh, before uh, I think he's been jumping more recently. Um, but cuts seem to be fine then. He clearly stays quite well or did. Um, you know, he's got some experience. He's got some experience at class two level. Uh, he knows how to win. He's only been out the places once in his six runs to date. He arrives here fit after a blowout uh, at Wolverhampton. He went off at five to six. He was clearly expected to do a bit better. Um, maybe it was the track, um, although he'd run well there before. Maybe he actually uh, wasn't as fit as Connections wanted. Or this may well have been the plan. Who knows? Um, you know, he's only... He was there or thereabouts for quite a long way. He was quite aggressively ridden. It could be uh, in this sort of field that maybe, uh, and being drawn this wide, that tucking in and taking a lead maybe seemed to better effect. But both those horses, uh, Labib and Luigi uh, Vampa, are on my trend short. This will see if that trend's profile ho holds or is any good. Um, but some of these races have worked out okay. There's clearly more to come from him. He stays, he's fit. Um, he looks to on the trends and the angles that I've looked at appears to have the right profile um, and at what both could be kind of 10, 12 to 1 plus I think uh, maybe of interest of course um, that's a flick through the kind of stats and trends shortlist you may want to have a look at this longer list and the race in more depth uh, and have a flick through some of these other horses you've got the likes of the haggis horse here first run of the season stamina and unknown although he's shaped as if he'll relish it uh you know he's up another seven pounds after his last win but you know four year old more to come from him so michael's get better with age generally he arrives here fit and in form also open to progress um so you know it looks a decent race the ryan horse is lightly raced variance is lightly raced um etc etc so it looks a competitive little race but uh you know for a bit of fun and interest i've had a flick through and those two down here uh, we'll see how they do um but yes uh, don't necessarily take my word for it um but hopefully i've said something of interest with that particular race and you can take a closer look at some of these horses uh, and see how they get on and i'll be interested to see and keep my fingers crossed that the uh some of the trends and the winner may be here somewhere uh, as i do have faith in this kind of class two uh, flat handicap and this approach longer term in helping uh, to highlight some winners that hopefully we or you and I or people watching or reading the blog can land on. Um, 210. Let me jump over to there. I'm um, just trying to see if I want to say anything else. Um, of course, I may not have mentioned the winner. So yeah, do take a, a closer look. Um, we've got the 210 at York. Um, and what do I want to say about here? Let's start with the instant expert again. Um, good to soft. Let's do good through to good to soft. Uh, this is all. Uh, let's just have a look on the flat, uh, flat turf. Uh, and we can see the stats there. Uh, that's for handicaps. If I look at all, um, you know, greens, obviously a positive. Amber's a positive. You can see those that have got form in the kind of going and class proven in the going in class um you know handicap marks down here those that are above those that are below their last uh winning handicap marks there's a few that are yet to win in handicaps um if i look at yeah their form in handicap and flat handicaps in particular in the race conditions ahead mr lupton he's still one pound above his last winning mark Rolston Scar, two pounds above. Uh, that's not to say they can't win, of course. Um, if I look at the place, Magical Spirit ticks a lot of boxes in terms of um, race conditions. Uh, he needs to improve again, but might do so. I may touch on him in a minute. Um, you know, that that is an each way option uh, in terms of this instant expert, at least. He looks interesting. Uh, open to attack, maybe from something better handicap, but that's something to take a closer look at. Woven looks interesting. Uh, good, good to soft. Class two um, distance is fine. Uh, yet to run at York. Um, but that's not to say uh, that's not necessarily a negative. Like I said, those of course form is more a positive for them uh, than being a negative for those that don't. Um, so, you know, from the internet expert place, uh, there's a few interesting ones there. You can pause that, do what you want with it. Um, let me look at the pace map, which is interesting. Let's sort this by the draw. Uh, you tend to not want to be too held up, as you can see. Um, uh, well, when it's good through to good to soft obviously if you're further back uh you need um them to stop in front and actually when 
the better the ground, you can come from further back in these bigger fields, but it can also pay uh, to race more handily, as you can see here. I don't think, um, well, let me just look at that pace map there so you can you know, look at that and do what you want with it. That's just the pace map for their running styles. Let me just sort by draw. So again, one on the inside rail as we look on our TV screens across to the other side of the track, uh, drawn to those, uh, through to those drawn higher up here. Um, if you're looking at, you know, those who usually bomb forward, there's pace from hyperfocus hyper focus, uh, pace from Abarama Gold of Keith Dow Gleish, uh, Bielsa can go forward. Hey, Jonesy down here. If you're looking at this, it does look like the more sustained pace could well be from kind of draw 10 down, although Magical Spirit can get out also. So maybe it'll be fair. Um, maybe there will be no pace excuse. Um, but these two here could help drag the low horses along into it. Um, so that might be of some interest. But you can obviously pause that, rewind and do what you want with it. Here we've got uh, kind of a one, two, three, four, five, six, there's seven on a kind of longer trends list there you can see the profile uh, there and that, that would leave 12 and 12 and if this if my stats profile in this does uphold um the winner will be on this list here somewhere but we shall see if it does uh, and those that have shown a winning attitude in the last 365 days uh, you've got a um yeah, the angle, oh, well, yeah, you can see the three horses in front of you there, and then the trainer records. Um, down here, uh, there's kind of three of interest. I'm ticking along to 25 minutes, and I should uh, wrap this up pretty soon. Um, I'll do the speed ratings, which can be useful, especially for sprint trips. So the GG speed ratings might be worth uh, noting down, possibly. Um, I thought Magical Spirit is interesting. Kevin Ryan doesn't have a great record in this race. Um, he did win a decent race at Air the back end of last season, Redley off 88, an RPR of 102. He is five. He could still be open to improvement. Um, obviously, he's eight pounds higher than that. That race has worked out uh, fairly well. Um, well, it's produced 11 subsequent winners. And if I just look down here, um, well, you've got Aberama Gold's put in three. Um, and there's a few further winners kind of down the field, as you can see here. Um, and that was the Silver Cup, which is obviously usually competitive. Um, so that was uh, stepping up back up to six furlongs. Um, he can race prominently. York, he's got experience. Maybe that ground went a bit too soft for him. Um, and he was uh, tracking the leaders on the near side. I can't remember if that was the best draw or not in this particular race. Let me have a quick look. Um, we can see here. Uh, so he was drawn 19. So he actually did best of those drawn the highest. The winner was drawn in six. Second was in 10. I'd need to go and watch that back. Um, but Desert Safari's won a couple since. Uh, you know, there's a few winners further down as well. Um, so maybe the ground went too soft. Uh, re we can grudge in the final furlong. That was obviously on the back of that big effort at uh, air. Um, he returned this season. Good to firm at Doncaster. Um, sent off 11 to 1. Another wind up. Second run. I think he had a wind up there. He's had another one. Second run back after that wind up. I suppose that air victory was his second run, it looks like, after a wind up there as well. So that may be interesting. Uh, the jury's out whether or not the handicapper has him. But he's got high class form, he's got course experience, races that have worked out well, he can race prominently, he's drawn in the middle, so I suppose Kevin Stott has options, the yard are going along fine. I think he's zero from 17, three places in the last 12 years in that this race, I suppose that would be a slight niggle, um, but maybe only that. Uh, whether or not he's open to attack from something better treated, I suppose that's the question. Uh, but he would be interesting. Um, and then two... Uh, Near the bottom interested me to a point uh, from the trends list. Uh, that's if it upholds, of course. Woven, who's won from 11 in his career. He hasn't won for a while, but that was at York, over seven furlongs, as you can see here. Uh, so he does have stamina. He is drawn in one, which may be not ideal, and he may want them to go extra hard. But this was where was uh, when he was with David Simcock. I would possibly argue, actually, that a move to Dodd, certainly for a sprinter, uh, may well be a hefty enough trainer upgrade in my opinion um that's without having any stats to back that up uh, but he has lots of consistent efforts and lots of decent runs in some three-year-old class two handicaps some decent races uh cut doesn't seem to be a problem to him i think he's got the class he was rated in the kind of low 90s here um he came into red car 
first run of the season, slowly away, held up, was doing all his best work late, just held there. Um, that was of 88, posting a racing post rating of 97, which if we look down here is actually a career best. So he does come back on here in terms of racing post ratings on the back of a career best. Dodds is going along okay. The fact this horse ran well after 37 days ago, enough of placing. Maybe he could be in better form, but he has done well at the track uh, recently. Uh, he has won this race before. The horse arrives fit and seemingly in form. That race has produced a winner. Maybe more of an each way bet. Maybe he does need seven furlongs or Michael Dodds has sharpened him up. He may need them to go harder uh, and he wouldn't want to be too far back and may hit traffic. Um, so it may be more that he's an each way kind of bet because uh, he will need a bit of luck in running. Um, and But he looks like he could have an OK handicap in him this season. Whether or not it's this race, we shall see. And I actually thought the Tim Easterby horse was interesting as well. Uh, it comes here fit, comes here in fine form on the back of a win. It was a class two, but an 81 OR racing post rating of 94. Um, he's got some... Uh, some okay experience in some uh, you know big fields down here uh, from when he was younger um, and big field form is always a positive in these kind of sprint races as well um, you know it could be that he has just developed again he comes here on the career best racing post rating uh, a kind of strongly run uh, well that he was ridden aggressively over six furlongs and that you know they ridden well i should say was trained by richard hannon again this horse appears to maybe appreciate it going uh, a change of routine a different trainer um, maybe racing more up north um but you know they changed the tactics and they kind of were more aggressive with him and he used to be held up and ridden more patiently so maybe he enjoyed that change of tactics he's drawn kind of 14 of 19 david allen i suspect will try the same thing again and go hard out in front um so you know having had a flick through and it was only that those three i've mentioned look the most interesting to me having said all of that with everything i've got no idea on what the market is uh with any of those horses i've uh, just mentioned but they may be worth a closer look um and yeah hopefully uh, i've shown you something or said something which you can note down or use the way in to help you to have a further look at these fun and fascinating competitive handicaps i don't think there was much else i wanted to mention um from the stats uh what did i i had a kind of brief flip, flick through some of these i thought nahar possibly interesting and pivoting uh, both of those may be worth a closer look um the three termers looked at minefield and race probably happy to watch uh two to one the pair i think at the top of the field in that race um but those two may be worth a, a closer look i thought they may be mildly interesting but i've been speaking for long enough half an hour uh, is probably 10 15 minutes too long but um you can't rush some of these things. Uh, so with that said, um, thanks for listening. Hope you found this useful to some degree. Uh, do check out the blog. Uh, do subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel. You should see a big red subscribe button below if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, do click like if you liked it. Uh, do post a comment either underneath this video or on the blog. If you've got any questions, I'll happily have a read and answer them. Um, but do check out the blog link below this video also. Um, and there's plenty of things you can read, including uh, the stats work behind most of the things I've said uh, today. So with that said, yes, uh, do subscribe to the channel down below so you'll get alerted of future videos. Um, but with that said, that's Josh. This is Josh from Racing the Profit saying uh, thanks for watching. Uh, best of luck uh, with any wagers as always. Uh, until the next time, this is Josh saying bye for now.